It's turkey day. Actually, it's the day before turkey day and I just need to get my turkey rubbed because I'm gonna do a dry rub for my turkey this year. It's really easy, delicious and citrusy. You're gonna love it, but you wanna start the day before you're gonna cook your turkey. So Thanksgiving Eve, get your turkey out. I have it on a rack in a large roasting pan and I'm just patting it dry all over. Make sure it's completely defrosted. So if you brought a frozen turkey, you're gonna wanna defrost it in the refrigerator for at least two or three days ahead of time. Remove the neck and the gizzards and stuff and you can use that to make a stock if you want to. You just wanna fold your wingtips under, keep it breast side down in your rack on your pan and then just set it aside for a few minutes. I'm gonna wash my hands for obvious reasons. <laughs> For the rub, I need a tablespoon of thyme. I'm using fresh thyme here. If some of the more tender stems get left in there, don't worry about it. It's the thick, hearty, really woody stems that you don't want to get in there. Give this a little bit of a chop. To that, you're gonna add a tablespoon each of orange and lemon zest. A tablespoon of orange zest. One tablespoon of lemon zest. Much easier to zest the lemon. Did you ever notice that? It's kind of hard to zest an orange. Make sure you save the oranges and the lemons for tomorrow in the refrigerator because you're gonna need the juice for the gravy. To that add two tablespoons plus one and a half teaspoons of coarse salt. Make sure it's coarse salt. And one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. And that's your rub. Easy as pie. It's not a ton. So use it sparingly. Rub your rub all over the back and the wings. Gotta use your hands here, sorry. And then turn it over and do the same thing for the breast side. Make sure you leave some of the rub because you wanna put some on the inside of your turkey too. You want flavor everywhere. And that's it for day one of your turkey. Put this into the refrigerator uncovered. The skin starts to dry out a little bit, which makes it nice and crispy in the oven. Keeping it in this roasting pan catches the juices that are gonna come out of it that you'll discard tomorrow. At least eight hours. My turkey has been sitting overnight. It's all nice and flavored. Lift it out for a sec and pour off any juices that are in the bottom of the pan. This turkey's been sitting at room temperature for an hour, and then just set the pan aside for a sec while you cut up some vegetables. I have two stalks of celery and two carrots. Just make sure they're clean, you don't need to peel them or anything like that, and cut those into thirds, put them in the pan, and then you need one large onion, same thing. You can peel it or not peel it, I'm gonna peel mine, and then cut it into wedges and put that into the bottom of the pan too. So to that, you're gonna add two cups of water. You add the water to your pan so that as your turkey's cooking, the pan juices don't burn because you wanna use them for your gravy, right? The turkey can go back on the rack on top of the vegetables. We're almost ready for the oven. Just going to sprinkle this with some paprika, delicious. Because I'm gonna be rubbing it all over the turkey, I'm gonna put some gloves on. Now we're set. So you could stuff this turkey with the cornbread stuffing that we made, but I'm not stuffing it today, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie the legs together. That really helps hold the shape together along with tucking the wings under like I did yesterday. It gives it a nice compact shape. It helps the turkey cook more evenly and stay nice and juicy, plus it's a more beautiful presentation. Now you sprinkle your turkey all over with about two tablespoons of paprika. And this is where the rubber gloves really come in handy because paprika is very staining on your hands. The two tablespoons of paprika that you rub all over the outside of this turkey gives it a beautiful mahogany color and a little bit of smoky sweetness that goes great with all that citrus. Ta-da! Clean, not dirty at all. Yay! And I haven't touched poultry so I don't have to wash my hands. I've preheated my oven to 425. The minute I put the turkey in, I'm turning it down to 375, and then you cook it about two and a half hours for an unstuffed turkey, maybe about three for a stuffed turkey. While the turkey's starting to roast, you can get your basting liquid ready. So I'm gonna use the juice of the lemons and the oranges that I zested yesterday. You need a total of a half a cup of lemon juice, so that's three or four lemons, depending on how juicy they are, and a cup of orange juice. The juices go into a small pot, and then add two cups of apple cider. Not apple juice, but apple cider. And then add two more tablespoons of the paprika. I don't think I mentioned this before, but you don't want to use the smoky, because that would be a little overpowering. And you certainly don't want to use the spicy, because that would be way spicy. And then one stick of butter. All right. All you want to do is put this on the stove, bring it to a boil, all the butter will melt, and then when it's time to baste, you just spoon it over the top 
and then keep it on a low heat while the turkey is cooking so that you can baste it throughout. You're gonna wanna baste your turkey every 20 to 25 minutes. I like to take it completely out of the oven so I don't lose heat from the oven. Make sure you bend your knees when you're lifting your turkey out so you don't hurt your back. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys, that is heavy. So stir up your basting liquid and then spoon it over the top. You can use a baster here or you can use a brush. I'm using a spoon. It just keeps the turkey nice and juicy and delicious as it's baking. And after a little bit of time in the oven, about 25 minutes, like I said, the top might start getting a little bit dark. It might look like it's getting burnt. In order to avoid it getting any darker, what I like to do is tent it with some aluminum foil. That protects the top from getting overly dark while it's baking but allows it to continue baking without getting too dark. I would probably tent it after about 25 minutes and then remove it every time you want to baste it. Back in the oven. Oh my gosh. When you take your turkey out, make sure you use an instant read thermometer and it should be 165 in the deepest part of the thigh. So stick it between the leg and the breast. Very carefully lift your turkey out of the roasting pan and place it on a board to rest. Give it a tent so it doesn't get too cold and then you can make your gravy. The first thing you wanna do is strain out all your vegetables from your liquid. So carefully, make sure you always use towels to lift up this pan, because it's been in the oven. Strain everything through a fine sieve. You're gonna end up discarding the vegetables, unless you like to eat really, really cooked veg. Put the rusting pan back on the burners. Get rid of your vegetables. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a fat separator here to separate the fat. Fat separators are one of those single-use tools that I actually think are fantastic because when you pour your juices from cooking a big roast like a turkey or something, all the delicious juices that, that you want to use to make your gravy sink to the bottom and then the spout starts way at the bottom so when you pour the juices out, the fat stays in the separator. I like it. Take one cup of stock and pour it into your roasting pan and then you just want to scrape up any brown bits that are in the bottom of the pan. Bring that to a boil. While that's coming to a boil, take the remaining one cup of chicken broth and stir five tablespoons of flour. Just whisk it into cold chicken broth. That's all ready to thicken your gravy. And the fat has separated out of our pan juices, so I'm gonna add that back into my roasting pan. See how just the delicious pan juices are, and are coming out and the fat is all staying in the separator? That's what's so great about these things. When you get to the very bottom, all that's left in the separator is the fat and all the delicious juices are in your pan for your gravy. Single use item. <laughs> Once the liquid is simmering, you can whisk in your flour mixture. You wanna make sure that you do it nice and slowly, whisking constantly so it doesn't form lumps. Sometimes it's a little hard for you to center your roasting pan over two burners. So sometimes I just move it over one burner and then whisk the liquid back and forth so it cooks evenly. Season it with salt and pepper, don't forget that. And you are ready to go. Pour it into a nice bowl or a gravy boat, whatever you want. It's beautiful, it's golden ready deliciousness. It has a delicious, fantastic gravy and you made it. So you should be proud of yourself and happy to say, happy Thanksgiving.